Hi, I'm Brad, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Nothing. So I actually had a whole different video plan to release today. Uh, it was pretty much done like 90% of the way there, and it involved this thing. Steam Deck with a tracker on it. Um, that video will probably come out tomorrow at this point. Something kind of notable happened today in sort of the news uh, XR component sector. And I felt it was a good time to just rush this video out now because literally the last video I made was about this company. And I've been talking about this company on this channel for almost a couple years now. If you didn't watch that video, it was about this thing. Uh, a 2005 VR headset that was released for consumers and it had OLED micro displays within it, which is crazy. And it's from a company called Imagine. I was very interested in this company because I felt their technology was kind of something special. Uh, basically, if you've not followed anything, I've been seeing a lot of hints and like sort of connections that Valve at some point probably hired them to make a 4K by 4K display. I went last year to SID to kind of show it off, get some footage, Ash interviewed the CEO of this company all about what they had plans for the consumer sector and how they were going to bring it to the mass market. It was a really exciting time and it's actually ironic because this year's SID is next week and I was planning to go next week. What people didn't realize was Imagine is a small company. They're basically like a long term startup. Uh, they have one fab in United States and they mostly serve the military. No matter what they did, they were never able to actually build their uh, technology or their fabs to sort of compete with the consumer market or build displays for customers, maybe such as Valve or whoever else would want them for the mass volumes that they would need to make every customer happy, basically. So they always believed that they would partner with a what they called a tier one mass production partner to basically license their technology, which was uh, very different than when, how OLED micro displays are made now. Most OLED micro displays are built on white OLED and on the top they have color filters. Uh, this includes the big screen beyond, for example, this, this uses white with color filtered based OLED micro displays. And those are very easy and mass producible. A ton of Chinese companies do it. Uh, even LG is starting to do it. But the problem with that technology is uh, the color filters they put on top of the white OLED would actually remove 80% of the light. So even with a single stack white OLED micro display with color filters on top, you would get around a NITS rating for just the display of around 1800 and it goes up or down a little bit based on that for the single stack. Now that sounds like a lot, right, for OLED. I mean, most smartphones usually get around 1200 these days. But the problem is when you put those displays uh, next to optics and also do a low duty cycle to remove the motion blur, you don't get near as much of that light to your eyes. In fact, that's a lot of the problems with this uh, headset I complained about in my review, right? Is it it's a lot dimmer than LCD headsets, for example. Now, what Imagine has been working on for literally almost a decade is they were trying to remove the color filters and do what's called RGB OLED on a micro display. RGB OLED is actually what you have in stuff such as the uh, PSVR 2 displays, uh, your smartphones. Instead of having any color filters, they actually have individual red, green, and blue subpixels that don't remove 80% of the light because they don't have those color filters on top to convert the white light to red, green, and blue, which makes the full pixels. Now, that's very easy to do these days for a uh, larger size panel, such as watch, smartphone, um, and it's starting to get into the IT sector, which is for like laptops or monitors. But getting those RGB subpixels um, directly patterned on tiny micro displays with, with subpixel size of like three micron, very difficult to do. So when I saw Imagine doing this technology, I wanted to cover them. I thought they were very interesting. Um, so yeah, I just, I just kept watching them. But there's always one joke that kind of happens uh, between me and some of my more uh, seasoned community members is that whenever I really get excited about a, a startup or a technology or I just cover it, especially again, I made a video on this company last week, they always seem to like disappear or get acquired or whatever. And I'm happy to say <laughs> that curse continues today uh, because we just got this press release from this Imagine company, and I want to go ahead and read all of it and kind of talk about what it would mean for people that might have also been excited for the technology. I'll also talk about the investment side a little bit too, which I usually don't go into, but since the stock is about to disappear, I think it's fine for the channel. But it's very interesting. 
On May 17, 2023, Imagine Corporation, a US-based leader in the development, design, and manufacture of active matrix OLED micro displays for high-resolution AR, VR, and other near-eye imaging products, today announced that the company has entered into a definitive merger agreement with Samsung Display, a subsidiary of Samsung Electronics, and manufacturer and distributor of display products. Under the terms of the agreement, outstanding shares of Imagine Common stock on a fully delayed, uh, diluted basis will be acquired for $2.08 per share in cash in a transaction valued of, at approximately $218 million cash. Yeah. Now, Andrew Scully, who is the CEO, is it's the guy who I talked to last year in their, our private meeting, the interview. Um, he said, this agreement is a validation of our technical achievements to date including our proprietary direct patterning or DPD technology, provides a significant premium for our shareholders and represents a win for our customers and employees. By teaming up with Samsung Display, we'll be able to achieve the full potential of our next generation micro display technology with a partner that can provide the resources and expertise we will need to scale production. Moreover, our customers will benefit from resulting improvements to our production capabilities in terms of yield, efficiency, and quality control. And on the other end, uh, of course, Samsung Display, which is actually the chief uh, CEO of Samsung Display, had this to say about the merger. Um, they basically emphasized that the strategic significance of the acquisition, stating, we expect XR, which is AR, VR, MR, all that thing, extended reality, devices to have significant potential of growth in the future, and imagine technology in this space will enable Samsung to offer innovative products to more customers and strengthen its XR related business. Now, of course, I said earlier that uh, Imagine does have a small fab, which uh, mostly sells to military and some commercial applications as well. Um, following the closure of this transaction, they will still continue to maintain that facility and operations in their New York fab for those customers while also being merged with Samsung to help build up the technology further. And talking about that fab, this actually comes right after that they received a gigantic deposition tool, which would allow them to make uh, these direct pattern micro displays for their own customers, again, the military and stuff. So that's a pretty weird timing to get this giant tool and then also get acquired for Samsung, which again, Samsung Display is saying that they would probably use this technology to sell displays to the consumer market customers, such as Apple is expected, Meta, uh, Valve, whoever wants to buy them will be able to give them designs based on wafers, and they would deposit the OLED using Imagine's technology, theoretically. Now, just to talk a little bit about um, the investing side of it, uh, I do want to say I do and I have held shares of this company for a couple of years. In fact, um, I never like to bring investment stuff into my channel, uh, which is why I tried to cover this company as little as possible, because it brings a weird audience usually when you cover stock stuff. But um, yeah, I I've owned the stock for a couple of years and actually they are literally selling uh, all their stock to Samsung at the price that I bought in a couple years ago. So I'm literally breaking even uh, on this deal, which is bizarre. But some people are pretty upset who've been investing in this company for a while. Um, again, this company has been trying to, to break in the consumer market for a very long time. There was a point in history, in fact, where they were very close to mass producing their displays with a mass production partner um, before 2018, around the 2017 era. Um, but it and eventually fell through because the sales of the Vive and, and the um, the Oculus Rift CV1 just started going down and all, all, all the hype around the VR industry back then kind of fell. So no one wanted to invest into big new lines for anything, uh, which of course sucked for this Imagine company. But what's really good about all of this, I'm not an investor type. I, I invested it because I liked the company's technology. I was more interested in getting this technology into products. And this is this announcement here is really what's going to allow them to do it. Samsung Display is not going, most likely not going to make this uh, technology exclusive to their products. Now, I do want to note that Samsung Electronics is working very fast on a uh, mixed reality headset to fight against Apple and Meta's Quest Pro. Uh, I wouldn't even be shocked if we hear about it by the end of this year, like all the, all the specs and everything. They, they are rushing very hard. That headset is very likely to have OLED micro displays of some sort. Not sure if it'll be this technology in it first gen, but um, 
basically what Samsung Display does, even to this day, is they supply displays for every company uh, because that's the only way they can be profitable. They're building these expensive fabs, this, this expensive equipment to build all these displays. They cannot make money by only selling displays to Samsung Electronics. Um, examples, again, PSVR 2 uses Samsung displays, the, the, the glass backplane OLED displays. Um, the Apple iPhone uses Samsung displays. Like they, they provide OLED to a ton of different companies to this day. And be, they've actually been building a micro OLED facility right now, which will apparently start pilot production by the end of this year. And with this in mind, it's more likely that Samsung will be able to bring Imagine's interesting uh, super bright technology, which also reaches the, the biggest milestone before this uh, merger happened was Imagine announced that they got 15,000 nits with a single stack RGB direct pattern display compared to, again, 1,800 on a single stack white OLED, which is, again, around the standard for that. So very exciting stuff. This will allow better optics to come out uh, because optics are inefficient. They can be thinner. Uh, headsets can be more colorful, better contrast values, all these different things. It will enable more technologies in the optics side because the display sides are getting better. And the more interesting thing is they'll also be able to do what's called dual stack, which is they'll be able to stack the emitters on top of each other and get around double that 15,000 nits value. So there is a future and a path for consumer displays to possibly get 30,000 nits just emitted with low power because, again, they don't have the color filters, which is ruining all that light value before it even hits the optics. So. For me, this was a pretty exciting announcement. Um, I, I, I'm I'm sorry that the curse has continued. It started with Imagine Optics. Uh, I covered it and got acquired, and then a couple others. And now Imagine has joined that list. I will be at SID Display Week uh, next week. I'm not sure if I'll be able to talk these the, the, uh, these guys this year because they are now part of Samsung. So I have no idea how that works. They're no longer a small company, even though it doesn't get fulfilled by the end of this year but very interesting stuff i hope you enjoyed this uh video it's it's a weird one but it's just it's just like a like a like a closing point i feel to this um two-year coverage of this company and i have a few videos talking about it so yeah that's it bye